so just like we had the uh, just like we had this uh, this theorem for decentralized sgd we are also we also have a similar result on uh, federated learning and how and when federated learning works and what are the uh, sort of error rates that we can or error convergence rates that we can provide similar to the centralizers the centralized sgd that we looked at and the decentralized sgd that we looked at so the assumptions the key assumptions it's going to be very similar to what we had made uh, during decentralized sgd so the first thing is the lipschitzness of the lipschitz smoothness of the local objective function so that means uh, function fi is l lipschitz right which is to say that for every so this is true for every function f every local objective function f i and for any points x and y this is the lipschitz smoothness of the local objective function then we assume that the gradients are going stochastic gradients are unbiased estimates right so that's the another another assumption that we had made in the context of decentralized sgd so stochastic gradients is an unbiased estimate so meaning the expected value of this stochastic gradient this is equal to okay then we also we are also assumed in even in the context of decentralized sgd that the stochastic gradients have bounded variance so essentially to say that variance of gi uh, this is going to be bounded or the expected value of combining the unbiased gradient and the bounded variance so this is what you get okay and finally uh, bounded dissimilarity is again related to data heterogeneity the kind of assumption that we made in the also made in the context of decentralized sgd so bounded dissimilarity says that there exists there exist parameters beta square greater than equal to 1 and kappa i square greater than equal to 0 such that over some say and if for iid data if the data is iid so you have beta square equal to 1 and kappa square is equal to 0 so assuming you have uh, these assumptions you can show that if you work with m clients which is c times k c is the fraction of clients that you are going to be working with you choose a learning rate which is basically like this where tau so for now we are going to be assuming that every agent performs the same number of local updates which is going to be tau so tau sub i is what we had but then we assume that it's the same number of local updates that every agent works with so if we have this then after t communication rounds capital t communication rounds from the server for t communication central server this is how you can bound the error in terms of the total number of iterations so now if you want to get uh, epsilon close and you would have to assume that this is less than equal to let's say epsilon over 2 and epsilon over 2 and then that basically gives you an estimate of uh, the total number of iterations required capital T 
to get uh, epsilon close to the uh, to make the error epsilon close right or epsilon small. Is this clear? So, this is very similar to what we the result that we looked at in the context of decentralized SGD. Obviously, we have more parameters here because in federated learning uh, uh, let us say the number of selected clients is, is an additional hyperparameter that we work with or the number of local updates uh, that we perform which is tau that is another parameter that we work with. So, this is the result. So, let us try and understand uh, like basically revisit uh, the basic understanding of federated learning and see what different how different parameters affect uh, uh, the learning behavior. So, the first question is so does the convergence between error and communication rounds. So, that improve does it improve with or deteriorates with the when, where I mean, if you change these hyperparameters. So, essentially this error essentially convergence of error does it in, uh, as as a function of communication total number of communication rounds does it improve if you increase the fraction of participating workers what do you think. And you also have the result here, but what do you think does it improve as you in, uh, increase the number of uh, participating workers or clients. If you if you gather information from more clients do you think the error would converge faster right. So, it it is better as you increase the value of C right something that we have already looked at which is over here as you increase C you see the total number of communication rounds required that gets become smaller. So, as you increase m you see you have a square root of m kind of thing which basically supersedes this linear growth then right. So, that is one thing. If you increase the mini batch size what happens with the total number of local updates? It becomes smaller right. So, if you have smaller number of local updates we saw that uh, you would require more rounds of communication right. So, this becomes worse. What about increase in total number of epochs? Better right. So, it will be better. But do we do we really want to increase the total number of uh, local epochs to a significantly large number? So, it is it is it is in most cases it is better like if you if you have too many local updates happening at the same time and we will look at a one particular example, but if you had too many local updates happening. So, then what would happen is that the model would overfit on the local training data. So, when you aggregate information from everyone, so you would have to first of all unlearn the overfitted behavior because your objective is to get a common set of features from every client right. So, then it would require more number of uh, more rounds of communication. So, in general as you increase E uh, increase the local number of increase the total number of local epochs it it basically improves the, uh, the convergence uh, behavior in in the sense that you would require fewer uh, communication rounds to get to the same error. But beyond a point uh, if it once it starts overfitting them um, like uh, if the model starts overfitting the data that is when you will have an, an issue right. So, it is largely better, but if E increases too much then they can be overfitting right. What about higher data heterogeneity? If you have higher data heterogeneity across clients, do you think does it improve the performance or makes it makes it worse? Worse sense, right? So, so this would be worse, right? And what about these parameters beta and kappa? So, beta and kappa, if these parameters increase, that means there is more dissimilarity, right? So, the, the, if you look at the assumption beta square is greater than equal to 1 and kappa square is greater than equal to 0 and if you increase them beyond this for ID data for ID data beta square is equal to 1 and kappa square is equal to 0 right. So, as you increase beta and kappa that means you are tending more towards heterogen like non ID data and that will also worsen the performance ok. So, this will also become worse. Is this clear to everyone? So, let us see how uh, what happens to the anticipated wall clock, wall clock time per communication round. So, during each communication round, so when what do we mean by each communication round the central server uh, 
uh, basically runs. So this server update is essentially what we are talking about. So how, how much time does it take for this uh, server update to happen? So each communication round, okay. So as increase in the fraction of participating clients, what do you think uh, happens to the wall clock time? You're going to be communicating with lot more workers or lot more clients. So that increase in fraction of participating clients would increase in the wall clock time, the time it takes, right? So this basically increases. What about increase in mini batch size? It will, so if you increase a mini batch size, that means you are doing full gradient descent and usually it takes time then, then to perform gradient descent in batches. But it like, so it can both increase and decrease depending on the model uh, parameters. So there is no conclusive sort of way to say that wall clock time will always increase. Let's say if I, if I have, if I work with one batch, batch size of one and I have hundreds of, hundreds of examples, so I have to run a for loop for 100. Uh, times right. If I have batch size of 5, uh, maybe I will have to run for loop 20 times. So this probably works better. But if I work with a batch size of 100, maybe I have to store 100 data points and uh, like extract it and so on. So it, it really depends on uh, model type of parameters, but it would mostly increase, but it may increase on decrease depending on the uh, model parameters. So there is no conclusive way to say. It depends on how many like model hyperparameters are there and um, how many model weights are there. What about increasing the total number of hip local epochs? Increase, right? So this would increase. Data heterogeneity. It doesn't affect, right? Data heterogeneity has nothing to do with that uh, wall clock time per com uh, per communication round, right? So it doesn't affect. Similarly, if you increase beta and kappa, that also doesn't matter, right? Because this is related to data heterogeneity, and that doesn't matter. All right, so the last thing that I wanted to talk about, which is stressing upon this particular point here, this overfitting issue, right, as we mentioned. So should we use, I mean, as we had seen in, in this particular example on training a two layer neural network or the CNN for MNIST data set, as we increase T, as we increase the total number of lo uh, local epochs, capital E, Basically that requires, that basically translates to requiring fewer number of communication rounds. But that, is it always the case? And I mean, it may, it will be the case that it will largely require fewer number of local rounds, but there is an another issue with this and with this data uh, heterogeneity. So, so let's say you have two functions, uh, there are two clients. Let's consider very simple, you know, like should we have more number of local ep uh, epochs or not? So that's what we're trying to address. Let's say you have two functions and function one is uh, x minus one whole square and f2 is two times x minus five whole square, okay? So if I look at, since I mean, typically we are looking at functions for which histogastric, I mean you have data driven uh, evaluation of functions, right? Like on the loss function. So in this case, we are assuming deterministic functions, uh, no stochastic gradients. So that global objective would be, let's say we use 50, 50 percent, like 0 0.5, 0 0.5 of those. So it would be half of x minus one square plus x minus five whole square. Okay. This is the global objective function. So what is x star here? the optimal solution. So for that, if you were to compute the gradient and then set it to zero, right? So that would be x minus one plus two times x minus five. In this you set it to be equal to zero and this gives you x star is equal to, okay? So that this is the optimal solution that you expect the neural network or the federated learning uh, framework to converge to. And this was largely, this would largely be the case. Let's say if I, let's say perform just one round of uh, local update. So then 
agent one would have this one t plus one is okay and likewise x2 t plus 1 is x t minus 2 eta times x t minus 5 okay so this is just using one local epoch right so this would give you if i just average this this is nothing but saying that x t plus 1 is going to be simply uh, x t minus like if I just combine 0 0.5, 0 0.5 of this it is going to be uh, eta over 2 times x t minus 1 plus 2 times x t minus 5. This is just performing one round of uh, like basically one round of local epoch right or one local epoch and when this converges that means uh, the gradient becomes 0 and you would see that x t would converge to the optimal solution which is 11, 11 by 3 ok. But what if, what happens if I perform multiple rounds of updates? If I perform too many rounds of update what would x locally what would this converge to? x t would converge to or x t 1 would converge to? Just one right because it will converge to its local objective value local optimal solution. Uh, similarly this would converge to 5. And now if you take 50 50 percent of those it is going to converge to 3 instead of converging to 11, 11 by 3 right. So, you do not want to overfit or you do not want to perform too many local updates at the same time. So, that I mean so that you avoid potential overfitting and so that you can also ensure that the model converges to the global uh, optimal solution of the global objective function and not the combination like some weighted combination of the optimal solutions of the local objective functions. Okay, so that is the effect of uh, data heterogeneity. Uh, if you have heterogeneous, like in this case, we have heterogeneous data, so we are assuming they have local different, uh, different local objective value or different local optimal solution. And in that case, if you perform too many local updates, you would have this issue that uh, it doesn't like the federated learning framework does not converge to the uh, desired optimal solution. Is this clear? So yeah, that's that's all I wanted to cover in uh, today's lecture. So we'll look at more of federated learning in the uh, coming weeks. Okay.